you know, a lot of the times if you hear the word ugly, I, I guess, you know, one of my goals is to change people's mindset of the word ugly. You know, when you hear the word ugly as you were raised, you're growing up, ugly is a nasty thing. It's not a, it's a, it's a thing that you don't want anything to do with. You know, nobody wants to be the ugly kid or nobody wants to have ugly shoes to say that. I want to change the narrative and the definition of the word ugly. It's actually a really pretty space to be in. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? Family, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay? I know that's not you trying to download some songs just off of YouTube and then put on your podcast. I know that's not you, right? But if it is, I want to introduce you to our friends over at Audio Hero. Here's why. Audio Hero, they have a library of over 300,000 royalty-free music and sound effects, all right? Royalty-free premium royalty-free music and sound effects. So this is the perfect way to enhance the quality of your podcast and further elevate the audio experience. All you need to do is go to the link just down below in the show notes and they have a offer just for you being a Your Podcast Show listener. All right, so you can type in the promo code JJS30 to get 30% off the monthly subscription or you can type in JJS50 to get 50% off the annual subscription. Check out our friends over at Audio Hero. They're changing the game and helping us creators out. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. Now back to the episode. What's going on? What's going on, family? Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. We're here. This is your number one source for podcast news, podcast how-tos, and also interviews. And I'm, I'm excited today to be able to bring on to the Your Podcast Mentor Show, none other than the creator of the Do It Ugly brand, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do It Ugly brand, you know what I'm saying? Coach. That's a rhyme. Huh? That's what? a rhyme. Do What's It Ugly rhyme? brand, know what I'm saying? I, I guess it is a rhyme. I guess it is. So got, none, none, other than, <laughs> none other than <laughs> Kelly, Coach K, Kels. Kels, what, what's going on? Welcome to the Your Podcast. What's going Network. on, King? What's going on, man? I am. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I was so. Uh, I just sworn he said four fifteen, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm here. He's not here." I didn't notice the CST for some reason. I like don't realize the CST. I feel like you're on the East Coast, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, I was. You know, I, I was on the East Coast um, for, right. for the weekend, but now we're in the week. <laughs> so we're yeah. So, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we're here. So we're here. But now, now, Kels, I'm, I'm gonna kick it to you, and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you just give your introduction to the people. Who is, who is, who is Coach K. Kels? Talk, talk to us. Talk to who us. Is Coach K. Kels, man. I'll let you know when I find out. It's like, nah, I am Kelly Kels. I am the ugly brand. Uh, <clears throat> now known as Coach K. I am your fears and limiting beliefs coach. Um, started out with developing the the apparel line, the Do It Ugly brand. And it's now just taking itself to a whole different level. Um, I, I never something that I never really saw, but uh, it, it's 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 fitting. So um, I am now Coach K. Like I said, your fear and limiting beliefs coach. Uh, I help people get over or get past or get through their fears and limiting beliefs so that they can reach their full potential. Hmm. Solid. 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 Okay. So let, let's let, let's rewind this thing. Let's rewind this thing. Mm -hmm. Where did the ugly brand start? Because we can't, we, we, we're going to get, we're going to get to Coach K. We're going to mm -hmm. get to the podcast. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to all these things. But where did the ugly brand start? Talk about that. Ugly brand started um, in a morning meetup. Uh, you know, we we're both a part of the morning meetup. Shout out to Dave Shans. And uh, actually the author of Ugly, and you'll all, everyone will always hear me say is the author of the ugly brand is, is Jose. Um, and he would, when I first came to, to the morning meetup, I came through recession proof, uh, because I did credit repair. And so my goal was to get better with credit repair. Cause I'm a real estate agent here in Maryland as well. And so, um, my goal was to get better in, 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 uh, credit repair. And so as when you join recession proof, uh, morning meetup is a part of that. So I started coming to the morning meetup and 
Jose used to talk on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday he would speak, and it was always about content. And uh, my my page is all out of whack, you know, but just before I even got to realize how important content was. I used to use social media as entertainment. And so, um, you know, then the mind shift started. And he would say, you know, you need to go live. And so I would start, I would record, I had a thing called Financial Fridays. And I would record about an hour worth, uh, an, uh, an hour's worth of time of about something financial. Um, and whether it's about how to budget or, you know, credit stuff. And so I would record it and then post it, right? Because that gives you room for error. You know what I mean? And and two, I was just, you know, I wasn't, I, I didn't want to be in in, a, in front of people. You know what I mean? Like, it's because if you're live now, it's like, yo, people watching you and whatever's happening, it's happening, it's live. And so um, he would always encourage to say, go live. And I'm like, okay, all right, so let me try this thing, right? Let me try this live thing. I went and I recorded my first live. Okay, I went live and it was trash, man. Like it was trash. My audio was bad, right? I didn't realize that, you know, your lock on your phone is going to cut off after whatever amount of minutes that you have. So it's like, what, two minutes or so? And then in the middle of the live, it just cut off. And I'm like, well, what the heck? Because the phone cut off. So, okay, boom, I got to go and change my settings so that the phone doesn't cut off, right? So I do that. Sound was horrible. Lighting was horrible. It was just bad, man. It was bad, but I did it. And so the next week I came back and I uh, asked my question on Jose, on, on uh, Wednesday. It was Jose. And I was like, look, I went live. Um, it was horrible. Like, bro, it was bad. And his response to me was, but did you do it? And I said, yeah. He's like, so you did it ugly, right? And I was like, yeah. And, and the feeling that it gave me was still a sense of accomplishment. But before then, I just kept worrying about how bad it was, right? And I was like, hey, I want you to check it out. And I sent it to his DM. If you know anything, like I know, Jose don't respond to no DMs, okay? This is, he, he, it takes my man forever to respond. I don't even know if you ever saw the video until this, like, to this day. I don't know. But it, it resonated with me. The words do it ugly because not only did it resonate with me going live, it got to a point that when things like would, would happen, I'm like, okay, do it ugly. Boom. All right, cool. Done. All right, do it ugly. Boom. Done. And I got to a place where I'm like, yo, no matter what I do, I don't care what it looks like. And that feeling, I'm like, okay, this is a thing. And so one day um, I asked him, we had Jose Day. Can I say, can I? Can you have questions, Q&A? And I said, Jose, can I have that? That's it. That's all I asked. And he was like, have what? I said, do it ugly. Uh, can I have that? And he said, you can have it. Do what you want. And next thing you know, I was like, I'm going to turn this into a brand. I've never touched the apparel space ever prior to that. Like, I'm somebody who doesn't even care about my own apparel. Like, I, my shoe game, lit. Clothing game, yeah, I'm going to try to wear them my clothes as long as possible. And they probably came from like Air Postle or something. Like I don't get into, you know, so it's so so for me to be in the apparel space and to or to just dive into it, I had no idea what I was doing. But I felt like I was allowed because <laughs> that's the point. So that's where the brand came from. Do it ugly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I didn't even know. I didn't know you asked Jose, can I have that? I asked Yep. I did not know that. Yeah, and, and I, I will go back through the recordings and find it. Um, it was probably back uh probably around April or May, um, where I asked to have it and um we launched by July. Wow, so May, June, July. So yep. two two to three months ish. Two to three months ish. Um and it's I had the design done probably within two weeks because I took what I learned from Recession Proof and getting your logo done was to go to Freelancer. And so I went to Freelancer and I put out a little bid out there, a little contest and uh, said, you know, this is what I want. I, you know, looked for logo design, but clothing logo, logo design, not not a, uh, you know, professional design, so to speak. And um, I saw a font that I liked. And then I knew I wanted to have a mask, 
You know what I'm saying? I knew somewhere, shape or form, I wanted to have a mask. And so I asked the young man to do it in a font. And then my sister called it called me and said, well, what about the vigilante? And I'm like, well, what's that? You know, what is that? I don't even know mm-hmm. what the vigilante is. And she's like, here, this is what it looks like. I have a thing for clowns. It's crazy. I don't like clowns. I love Joker and Harley Quinn. I, I have them both tattooed on my leg. I love Joker and Harley Quinn. Um, so I wanted something like that. Not the Joker face, but something. And she gave me the vigilante face. And I and I asked the designer, can you put that inside of the O? And between that and it was a couple of other logos, to be a thousand percent honest, I didn't even like the logo that selected. I didn't even like it. But the people that I sent it to were like, yeah, that one. That's the one. It's not this was not this wasn't gonna be that wasn't gonna be my choice. <laughs> but I had what I had sense enough to know that it wasn't about what resonated with me. It was about what resonated with everybody else. And so that's how I ended up. We got the logo. I knew, like I said, I knew nothing about the apparel space. We had a Q&A on Thursdays. Start asking Dave some questions. Where do you get shirts from? And and I had a friend of mine who's in the apparel space. And he was like, I ordered my shirts from Pakistan. Gave me his guy in Pakistan. And... um, I had just gotten approved for a little business credit card and I took $564 and had the first set of, of shirts printed from Pakistan. Uh, and once they came in, um, I was, I was going to release, you know what I mean? There was a young man. I don't know if he's in a morning meetup anymore or not. His name is TJ and he loved the brand so much. He said, Kelly, I'll set up your Shopify. I'm like, you know, I, you know, you can teach me. No, nah, I got it. Do this. Give me the passwords. I'll set everything up. He set up the entire back end of, the, of, of Shopify. And um, we got that set up. And then there's a young lady. Her name is Samara. So, yeah, Samara. I call her Sam. She's in the morning meetup uh, every now and again. And she pops in and pops out. And um, she's the one who did the marketing promo for the brand for we released. She said, I love for it, same thing. I love the brand. Um, it's like it's fire. Like it's every like it's everything. She came to my house with her, um, I think it's her now boyfriend. He's a, a videographer. I had my own photographer come. I had five friends who, you know, I felt like were model faces. There's a basketball court in the back of my neighborhood, and that's where we shot the promo video, in my house. And then at the, the basketball court, we launched uh, July 16th at 11-11. Sold out. We had 25 units. Um, about five. We used about five of them for, you know, the, the shoot and everything like that. So we had about 20 um 20 units left and we sold oversold i think triple if i'm not mistaken when the brand launched wow wow yeah. from from three months before not knowing anything about the apparel space nothing about the apparel space and then you hear you hearing a motto that you said well mm-hmm. you hearing a mantra that you mm-hmm. said i like this mm-hmm. i'm gonna live this mm-hmm. and then Somebody helped you with the Shopify. Mm-hmm. Somebody helped you with the promo, mm-hmm. and then tripled down mm-hmm. on sales with the promo launch. Mm-hmm. Tripled down, and then it's like, okay, now what? So the next Thursday we had Q and A day. I told Dave what happened. I'm like, bro, I don't know where to get because what I can't do is wait for Pakistan again because because the timing was it wasn't going to be good. He said, you go here, go to Alpha Broder, you know, go to these, go to these places, order these shirts, and you need to connect with Joe. He'll get your shirts printed. So I connected with Joe, gave me Joe's number. I connected with Joe. And the prints were ready by time I went to the content creation boot camp the week of August 4th through the 6th. I landed in uh in, in Atlanta, got in my rental car, drove down to meet Joe, and I had probably about four boxes of t-shirts. Um, but prior to my, prior to me going, I researched where to get, um, like the packing, the bags and everything like that, shipping Mm -hmm. bags, everything like that. I got a label maker from Amazon. So one of my bags that I took down to Atlanta literally was just packing bags, label maker, um, and shipping bags. And so when I got down there, oh, and the little folding thing, uh, I don't even know if I had that. I think I actually hand folded those. And, uh, I went, got all that stuff, went to my Airbnb. I went to the mixer that we had at the uh, Top Golf. 
I came back that night. I probably didn't go to sleep till about two, maybe one, one, one o'clock, uh, fulfilling all of the back orders. Um, and uh, shipping those out. So when, we, when I went to the content creation boot camp, when we had lunchtime, everybody else was eating lunch. I was headed to the post office to ship my really huge first, uh, the, the remaining shipments from the initial launch back. So I did that while I was down there. And then those shirts, the extra shirts that I had, because I had started playing with some colors. And it's the moment I showed up to, you know, the the content creation boot camp, it's like, hey, do you got these shirts? You got shirts with you? And I'm like, well, yeah. And I'm like, but I don't even know how to check these things out, you know, because I didn't want to do Cash App or anything like that. I did at the time. Uh, but Joe was like, hey, this is how you use the Shopify POS system. Oh, okay, cool. That's what's up. And it straight up looked like a bruh man selling Whitney, Whitney Hutton shirts out of the trunk at the, at the content creation boot camp. <laughs> Witty Hutton shirts. That's funny. I remember yeah, that episode man. of Martin. That's funny. Yeah. One of my favorite shows. Wow. Wow. So so from from where the ugly brand is now, mm-hmm. right? Did you it did you even expect it to hit this level of success? Because how many months is it now from when you started? We're not even a year. So we're probably about uh eight months, maybe. You got July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Seven months, eight months in March. Okay, so seven, so seven, seven months, and how yep. how many units would you would you guesstimate that that you that you moved? Oh man, I'd probably say a, a good, uh, I'd say about a good mm, one to two thousand, one to two thousand. Being generous, I need to I need one to look at the uh, I didn't go questions because I, I I now want to look at the answer. I want I want to go on Shopify and find the answer out, and I will find it out for you. But one to I'll, two. I'll, over a thousand for sure. Even over, even over a thousand. Goodness, good, even over a thousand. good night. And those night. are the units that uh, those are the units that have been paid for. Uh, there, are, I do have units that I've given to um, influencers. Um, so, but but the units that have been paid for definitely it's, it's been it's over a thousand for sure. Yeah, Lee. And then who and then who are some of the people that we've seen wear your brand? Because I mean, I've, I've I've seen it out in these streets. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. I've given it to uh, Rick Ross. He's had it on. Um, Pushman Mitch. He's had. He's got all five of the color. All four of the t-shirt releases. That was he got those in Atlanta um, when I was down there. Of course, Dave, uh, Jose. Um, there's a couple other people I know that've had it. Uh, who else? No, Jason White. He's a government contract. He's got the shirt, the hoodie. I just was able to pass it off to Brett for the the owner of Bel Air this weekend. He put pass off the one that you have to him. Um, I was able to get one of Wall Street Trapper this weekend. Um, so you know, I, I don't have a problem shooting my shot. There's a couple people I got in my DMs that I need to send some to. Um, one of the husbands from Married to Medicine. I'll be sending his to um, this weekend to him. Um, so. You know, I, I I don't uh I don't have a problem shooting a shot. Man, you out here in these streets because a, th- a thousand yeah. units is a, a thousand units is is very sizable. I yep. mean, yep. Like I I don't know I don't know what the stats are for you know moving apparel in the first year, but a thousand is a thousand ain't, ain't nothing to put your nose up at. Yeah, I uh, I, I'm actually gonna look that up. Um, what is the common number, and then I want to know my exact number. I I never, no, I've never looked at it. I never looked at it. I, I but and that's one thing that I, I I need to get better in is looking at numbers. Um, but I I just don't focus on that. I focus a lot on the creativity and just getting it in the hands of um awesome people. There's a young man uh, in Baltimore. Uh, his name is Timothy. And he's a, a drummer and a dancer, like at the same time. The dude is crazy. His footwork and stick work. It's nuts. Um, he just got a hoodie this weekend as well. I, I, I shipped that off to him. And once again, just sliding in the DM. Uh, Corey Arbinger from Support Support Black Colleges has has our brand too. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's 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 dope. That's dope. So if if there's somebody out there and they they're like, I want to get in the apparel space. Well, what would mm-hmm. be the first thing that, that you would tell them? Um, first thing I would tell them is to to love love your brand, 
love your brand, love what it stands for. Because if you, if you, if you get into the apparel space and in, in this, I feel like this is in any business. If you get into it for the financial gain, you're going to lose interest. But if you get into it for the love of what it is that you're doing, it, I don't think that that's going to go away. Um, so for me, the first thing that I would tell anybody, if you, if you what, make sure you develop a purpose behind your brand and that purpose can be whatever it is, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be. It could be motivation. It could simply be athletics. It could be whatever, but just, just love, love your brand. You know, logos can be changed. Uh, really names can be changed if you wanted to, but love your, love, love your brand because it's going to be what you become. You know, I don't know, you know, more people know me than when people come and see me more than anything is ugly brand. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they might know my name because of coach K, but there's some people who don't, but they do know the ugly brand. So do it ugly, do it. That's all I hear. So, you know, it has become my identity. That's strong. So, yeah. That's strong, Kels. That's strong. That's strong. Okay. So, so we got, we got the ugly brand. Then let now let's go over here and, and, and let's talk about the the dot ugly truth. Uh-huh. The podcast. Excuse me, I'm gonna get some extra light here. The, the, podcast. the dot ugly podcast. Yeah. Um I content creation boot camp with Dave, and he starts this is when he began to throw in the the uh podcast portion. And he starts going down and he starts talking about how you can monetize a podcast and things like that. And once again, I never really focus on the monetization because I know genuinely I need a team for that kind of stuff because I, there's a lot of things that I literally just don't comprehend. Um, and, and I can comprehend, but because I'm moving so many different places, I'm working on putting people that I trust to be able to have a, have a niche. Right. And so, uh, I'm like, you know, he, I'm sitting in the front row and he's talking about a podcast. And I was like, so the bottom line is, Dave, I need a podcast. It's like, yeah. And so, of course, I'm like, well, everything's got to be ugly for me. So, you know what I mean? I just thought about it like the ugly truth. Everybody loves to hear an ugly truth. Everybody has an ugly truth. You think about it. Some way, shape, or form, you have some. You have an ugly truth. Something has, has not been so great, and you either once survived it, or you've defeated it, or maybe you're still in it, but you have it. There's something that you've gone through that that that's just not the prettiest situation. And I, I we need to hear about those things because in the day and age of social media, all you get to see is the pretty stuff. You know what I mean? People get to show you the cars and the, you know, couples goals. Nobody knows that y'all are sleeping in separate rooms, though. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the, the cars and everything. Nobody knows that you rented it. You know, <laughs> the lovely house. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that it's rented, you know. But, but all they see is this stuff. They see it. But they don't get to see the ugly truth because a lot of people are not transparent and don't want to talk about it. They don't want to expose it, which is one of the reasons why I'm super transparent in my business. You know what I mean? When things things mess up, it's a, it's it's really like a comfort zone for me because I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I, sometimes when that kind of stuff happens, I'm like, okay, guy, you're just trying to use my own theory to prove my own theory to myself. You know what I mean? It's really easy to tell other people to do it ugly, but then when you have to do it ugly, you know what I mean? Like, then what? You know? So um, I thought about it, said the ugly truth. And then I, well, of course, I Google the name and somebody else does have it spelled regularly. So I just added a couple little things in there. The dot ugly truth podcast. Which the truth is spelled T-R-O-O-T-H. Simply because yeah. someone else had it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Makes sense. Got, got, got to be creative and, and clever with the name. But uh, just, just like you said, it's, it's still on brand because ugly is ugly. Yep. Ugly is ugly, so, and, and that's another reason why I didn't mind misspelling it because it's, it's ugly. You know what I mean? So it's not normal. And there's, you know, a lot of the times if you hear the word ugly, I, I guess you know one of my goals is to change people's mindset of the word ugly. You know, when you hear the word ugly, as you were raised, you're growing up, ugly is a nasty thing. It's not a, it's a, it's a thing that you don't want anything to do with. You know, nobody wants to be the ugly kid or nobody wants to have ugly shoes to say other. I want to change the narrative and the definition of the word ugly. It's actually a really pretty space to be in. I like that. I like how you, I like how you're doing a little, the, the twist on there, put the twist on there. Yeah. Like, yeah, because you're right. When you think of ugly, you're like, ugh. 
Uh, right. You know. Yeah, you're like, you get that sound in front. I hear the word ugly. I'd be like, really? Oh, yeah? You doing it that way? Oh, that's what it looks like? Okay, sit in that space for a little bit. Sit in that space. Mm, yeah, sit sit in that. Man, that, that that's good because because ugly is uncomfortable. And yeah. ju- just like going back to your story earlier, you were saying that at first doing the thing, you didn't want to have to do the thing, but going right. through and doing it, you got it done. Right. right. But you were able to get it done because you just took the time to do what needed to get done. However, it got right. done. Right. I didn't care what it looked like. I didn't care what it looked like. You know what I mean? You could say, you know, Kelly, your life was ugly. Okay. But I did it. Where's yours? I did it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, it, it builds confidence. It builds confidence. You know, when you when you when you wait for things to be perfect and you wait for things to just always make sense, they're never going to make sense. You, I mean, literally, you can you can add you because you're going to continue to add things to the equation that are going to make it not make sense. When you, but if you don't give it the time to not make sense, it starts to make sense. If that makes sense, right? That like, makes sense. No, no, no. That, that makes that, sense, that, right? That makes sense. Makes sense. If you give things too much time, you start thinking too much, and you overthink. And you're like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? Oh, then then it's and now nothing has happened because you're worried about what if you're worried about something that hasn't even happened. So now we're sitting here and nothing has happened because you're so concerned about what it might look like you know what i mean versus if you do it ugly you're like okay this is what happened now i need to tweak this this happened okay now i need to tweak this now i actually have some facts to build off of but when you're when you're when when you're thinking about the things that can happen you're not even giving it a chance to happen before you can even so you don't even give yourself an opportunity to correct anything because it hasn't even happened yet so now you're just sitting there it just doesn't make sense that's good, Kels. No, that, that that does make that makes a lot of sense because it's just one of those things about just overcomplicating things and you know creating yep. more uh, cr- creating more awareness of like our mm-hmm. fears and things like that. So mm-hmm. as we as as we talk about fears, it just makes sense <laughs> to transition. And now let's talk a little bit about uh, Coach Co- Coach K. Talk, talk about talk about Coach K because you went from you know creating the ugly brand, you know. Mm-hmm. Then we then we come over here and then the ugly brand has a cousin with the mm-hmm. dot ugly truth the podcast and mm-hmm. and, now, and now we have we have coach k talk talk about talk about becoming coach k becoming coach k is um it's a journey it's a journey and it's one that i didn't know i was going to take I, I didn't I didn't expect it to become what it's becoming. Just like I didn't expect what the brand to become what it was becoming. Um, I, I I got with with my coach, Mogul Mike. Shout out to Mogul Mike. And uh, he's like trying to. He's working. He was working on his own program. He's like, I can help you create a a, a program in ninety days. And I'm like, a program for what? You know, a program maybe me teaching people how to um, get into the apparel space. But in my mind, I'm like, well, I haven't been doing it long enough. You know what I mean? To do something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And he's like, you can create a program out of the ugly brand. Program doing what? What are you talking about? Kelly, do you not realize that the main focus of the ugly brand is tapping on people's fears? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't say. You don't say. Yeah. That's what you're doing. You're helping people get over a certain level of fear. And I'm like, yo, what in the world? And so I worked with him and we we took this thing to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? And my natural ability to be able to communicate and to be able to speak to people, because one thing I realized is, and it's not a two mile horny thing, but people listen to me and I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I mean, yeah, of course I hear people always say, Kelly, I did it ugly. I'd be like, all right, that's awesome. That's what's up. You know, post a picture of us in your shirt. Now when it's like, I did it ugly, I'm like, what fear did you overcome? What, mm-hmm. what was it that you that you beat? Because my mind is different. Because I didn't know that that was inside of me. But there was something that Mogul Mike saw inside of me I didn't see inside of myself, right? 
And so even then, I didn't know that it was a coaching thing, right? What really brought that out of me was Bryn. And one day we were on a call and there's a young lady and she said something about, she needed something. And, she, and, and Bryn was like, um, I said, you know, I'll tap in on that real quick. And I gave this young lady just what I thought was just a little bit of advice or where I, you know, about fear and stuff like that. And Bryn was like, so you offer coaching services? Yes. Awesome. And I'm like, what? <laughs> No, it's not. It's not what I offer. I don't know. You know what I mean? No, I'm I'm still working on this program that I'm building with Mogul Mike. I didn't have anything to do with me being a coach. And I I want to say the moment she said about coaching services, I'd love to say it was you who put Coach K in the chat. And I saw that. And immediately in my mind, the first Coach K that I think about is the one from Duke. Mm. He's, he's the best. He's one of the best coaches that's ever done it in college basketball. And I'm like, oh, okay, Kelly. So, okay. Okay, so this is what we're doing now. So now you, so now it's Coach K. So I spell it K-O-A-C-H and then and the letter K. So now that, so now we Coach K. So I've taken this, this coaching thing to a whole nother level when it's come to, you know, studying fears and limiting beliefs, the books, reading the books, talking to people and things like that. And it's like, yo, this is really a thing for you. Uh, because I've fallen in love with overcoming fears and limiting beliefs. And so now I've studied it. And so now out of, we have the ugly brand and then you have the dot ugly truth podcast. We now have the ugly university. Strong, strong. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I've seen you, you know, get, getting on your statistic, statistician, you know what I'm trying to say? The, the, the one where you get the stats. Yes. There we go. And you, you getting, you, you going in, getting the surveys and getting the results. Yep. I've seen you, you know, put out the calls to action, asking people, you know, share with me what what it what's your fear? What's your fear? Yep. What's your fear? And yep. you 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 are taking it to another level because it's one thing to say what's your fear. People tell you, and it's like cool story, bro. And then everybody moves on, right, right. But but it's another thing, like I've seen you do to see what to ask what the fear is, and then you're like, well, I want to talk to you because I want to help you analyze it. I want to assess this, right. Like, right. like we need to go a little bit deeper, right? Because because fears fears are an emotion. And so, believe it or not, as, as a human, we resonate with our emotions for only 90 seconds. After that, it becomes a decision. And so, a lot of us have fears, right? Because your emotion, you're human, so, so you're, so you're going to have emotions. And a lot of those will come trigger from the past or something that may have happened or something that may not have happened. But if you think about it, if it's something that has not happened, then it's something that's up here. It hasn't even happened yet. So you can't, it's hard to say it's happened to me before. So here's the result. And now that's why I'm afraid because I've experienced this result. A lot of the times, probably more oftentimes than not, you've not even experienced the result of something you made up in your head. So that's mm -hmm. where we have to get to is what is it that you're, why are you making this up in your head? Is it because you saw someone else do it? Then at that point, I'm going to tell you, well, that's not your story. Or is it because you've done research on Google? I'm going to tell you the same thing. That's not your story. You're here to create your own story. Coach K in the building. Coach K in the building. Coach K in the building, y'all. Oh, and, and I, I, just, I just want to put this caveat out there because we because you, you've you been dropping a lot of names. I know who these people are. But just in case you all aren't familiar with uh, what the morning meetup is the morning meetup. I'm gonna put a link down in the show notes, but this, this is the largest community uh, of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. showing up Monday through Friday, uh, where mm -hmm. different topics are addressed, unpacked. And then we, you know, we dive in and, you know, there's Q and A and everything like that. But one thing that you've said, just listening to your story, mm -hmm. Kills, I think mm -hmm. it's really, really dope just in terms of, two things really being brought to the forefront. And, and one of the person I was thinking about uh, that, that, that I know has been pivotal in your journey as well, but all of these individuals, like you can see your journey and all of these individuals are in the community of, mm -hmm. of the morning meetup for one. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other piece, which shout out to Kat, the accountability mm -hmm. part, right? Mm -hmm. So community and accountability Yep. Now, I, I believe has been really pivotal. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know, in the no, you're right. You're absolutely right. 
in, in, in the because I've seen the I've seen the transformation because, you know, when I first came in, I mean, I knew you as, you know, Kelly, I, right. I knew you as Kelly. And I and I also knew that you did credit repair. Right. And I also knew you did Turo. But that was but that, that was it was really Kelly who did credit repair. That, that's what I know. Yep. But yep. now literally seeing a transformation of you mm -hmm. creating the, the ugly brand, you coming out with the dot ugly truth, the podcast. And mm -hmm. then now getting to this next stage to where, you know, you're rolling out Coach K with the K mm -hmm. on the coach. Okay. And, and All university. Right. But I mean, it's, it's super, it's super dope to see what you've done. And even like you said, a thousand units. Yeah. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yeah. Kevin. I'm impressed. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. It's a uh, one thing and, and definitely not to, to leave out a uh, cat who's my accountability coach. Um, you know, it's one thing I don't have a problem with is execution. I know how to execute. But because of our typical entrepreneurial spirit, you got to stay focused on what you're executing. And once you execute it, okay, cause there's, there's one thing to do it. And then there's one thing to learn it and to, to exist in it and to grow it and to scale it. So you have to stay present there. And that's hard as entrepreneurs. We have that thing called squirrel syndrome. You know, um, and if, for those who don't know that, I would believe I was the one who came up with that because of the movie Up. OK, the, and the dog and you look at it and he looks at the, the ball. But the moment he sees a squirrel, he'll literally say squirrel and his attention will be done. That's how we are as entrepreneurs, because the moment we see something shiny, Toro. Apparel space, credit repair, real estate. <laughs> but. But, it, but but we see everything that the, it's like the you know the shiny object stuff, and so um, it's it's once I've developed okay this is where I'm supposed to be the ugly brand is where I'm supposed to be, and now it's the accountability where okay Kelly this is what you need to be doing next okay you need to stay focused here you need to get this done you get this done, you know and and it's it's you know we also we I think just as humans we have struggles with accountability because. You can easily get away when nobody's watching, you know, but but when people are watching and you get that phone call, and you're like, hey, excuse me, have you done the inventory yet? To actually have, have, actually have to answer and say, no, I haven't done mm. that yet. That sucks, man. Like, it's it's like, dang, you know, and you can come up with an excuse. You can say, well, I had this going on, I had that going on, I had that going on. And my accountability coach will say, oh, yeah. Oh, OK. So but the answer is you haven't done it yet, right? That's the answer. So now I have to sit there and eat that. You know what I mean? It's just not like always a good feeling. I mean, I've gotten to a place now where sometimes things are just not going to get done. It is what it is. That's the, that's life. But it's 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 amazing to have someone that's able to say, you know, or able to, you know, have, running their own businesses, multiple businesses, and still be able to have the the where and the know how and the and, and the desire to want to invest in me. And say, okay, you need to be doing this next. You need to do this. You need to do this next. And this is why coaching is so important for anyone in business, because there are a lot of mistakes that they made that I'm going to miss mm -hmm. because I have invested in myself, and I've also and they've invested in me. They give me everything that they've got, you know. And, and so, just I highly recommend that for anyone who's in a space where, where, even when it comes to podcasting, you know what I mean. I have you to look up to if I need to, I can always call you and stuff, stuff like that. But I have my, my, my podcast engineer, um, big moves. I, that guy, I mean, literally all I have to do is record. He does the rest. He does the rest. And, but that's how I, how I realize how powerful this brand is. There's so the people just want to be a part of it because it, they res it resonates with so many people. And I've got a, a very strong group of people around me. So uh, people might see me, but there's a lot working in the background, you know, and, and I will always give due credit. I'll always give, always give, um, you know, kudos where it's, where it's supposed to be because my podcast wouldn't exist without them. I'm not going to sit down and edit nothing. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not editing anything. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it is it, because it's not, it's too much. It's too much. And it's not, a, it's not skills that I possess. Could I learn it? Yes. Do I want to learn it? No, no, but he does it. 
and 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 talk about being held accountable. I mean, he's got the whole New York. I mean, my man is from New York, and he has the entire. I mean, he's a full New Yorker. So, you know, I don't I don't get many no's from him at all. From him at all, no passes. Um, but you know, I have a team, and 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 it's important to and I, and I see that even in you know folks like uh, Eric Thomas, Et. Um, his team, he has a whole team. I see Dave Shantz, he's got a team. And, you know, I'm not willing to try to take on this stuff by myself. I don't want to. I don't think that, you know, if you think about it, even Jesus had disciples, you know. Most so did. what makes me different? You know, I'm, I'm just grateful um, and thankful for the team that I have um, and that I'm building and in the, the ability for us to, everyone to just play their role. Nobody's trying to do something they ain't got no business doing. You know, um, my mom is a huge part of the team. Y'all get y'all folded shirts. I can guarantee you I didn't fold it. I don't even fold my own clothes. I try to hang up as much stuff as possible because I don't like to fold. I, I can't stand it. I <laughs> it's it's, it's so time consuming. It's time consuming. I don't like to do it. Um, but hang up as much as possible. Shirt, yeah, I'm not doing it. I mean, I will go to BJ's and I will buy the velvet hangers <laughs> in bulk. And try to squeeze as much stuff as I can, you know what I mean? And, and I don't have a lot of, cl- I don't, you know, I'm not a huge clothes shopper, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not folding nothing. I don't want to. I don't like it. So, but any shirt that you guys get, you know what I mean? My mom has fold. she folds all the shirts, she packages the shirts, and it's getting so much to the point to where because I'm moving into the coaching space, I'm still on, on the apparel space, but uh, the shipping and everything, I've gone so far as to buy her a, sh- a, a label maker. And very soon, within the next month, all of the inventory will be housed at her house. Uh, she's made a space. She's had my dad clear some space out for uh, inventory. And um, she'll be managing the inventory. I mean, she does now, but she won't have to come over to my house and count. Everything's going to be at her house from this point forward, uh, from, from, from the moment we move them over. So within the next month, uh, everything will be at her house. She folds them, she packages them, she puts the labels on them, she stuffs the bags with the cards, uh, the wristbands that you guys get when you get them. My mom does all of that stuff. Um, so my team is just sick, sick. Dang, that, that's that's what's up. That's what's up, man. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool to get to see behind the curtain, behind the ugly curtain today oh yeah you know, get to get to see uh, what, what really goes on back there. Um, we're gonna get ready to transition once again and i want to uh want to want to bring it to to the rapid fire uh segment of the podcast where we do it's called this or that so you're gonna pick one or the other so are okay. you ready let's go all right here we go city or countryside countryside winter or summer oh summer beaches or mountains Beaches. Comic book or comic strips? Comic book. Dine in or delivery? Dine in. Sweater or hoodie? Hoodie. Audio book or podcast? Podcast. All right. There it is. There it is. And final question. This is a little bonus. Who's one underrated podcaster that I should interview next? An underrated podcaster that you should interview next. I'm going to say Big Moves. Okay. I'm going to say Big Moves. Matt, um, he's got so much information uh, in the podcast space. But what I love about him is his growth. His growth. He, he, when we first started... He was doing what he had to do, but now he's actually putting forth the effort to learn new things, such small things, transitions. You know, when we first started, he was talking about thumbnails. I'm ready to go pay somebody to do thumbnails. Kels, don't worry about it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? I'll take care of it. I'll figure it out. And next thing you know, hey, here go your thumbnails. You know, our process, the way we do things. Um, and I know he's even reached out to you, I believe. I think you guys have had some conversation, but uh, that young man has a lot to offer. And um I think that people need to hear a little bit more about it uh, from the engineering side. You know, we get right now we're getting told to or not told, but exposed to podcasting mm-hmm. and, and what it can do and mm-hmm. how it can reach mountains of people. 
But one main thing that is forgotten about in a podcast is the engineering part of it. I don't hear a lot about it. And I don't think a lot of it is exposed, you know. Yeah, yeah, go get a microphone. Okay, check, got that. Go get a camera, check, got that. Don't even have to have a camera. Okay, cool, I'll use my phone. Great, that's awesome. You, there's so mm-hmm. many different ways. But when it comes to that editing and stuff, you don't hear much about that. And I think that uh, he he has a lot of the ins and outs about that. And so I think that he would be someone good. I'd love to hear that. Two podcasting kings right there. I'd like to watch that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to do this quick commercial and I'm going to kick it to you for the final word. Um, So if you're a speaker out there, you're a consultant, you're a coach, and you're out here and you're trying to figure out how can you ultimately accelerate your growth? How can you accelerate your authority? Well, you need to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com and sign up for the free training because there I'm going to show you not only how to accelerate your growth and your exposure, I'm going to show you also how you can take your voice and turn it into a profitable business. Okay. So if you're a speaker, coach, or consultant, go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com, sign up for the training, and you won't want to miss it. Coach K, please take us out with the final word. Final word, final word. Listen, everybody, I am Kelly Kells. I am the ugly brand. I highly encourage you. I highly encourage you to get over your fears. I'm here to help you get over your fears, your limiting beliefs, help you reach your best potential. Know that you have an assignment. Understand you have an assignment that is given to you. And if you don't complete that assignment, somebody else will suffer. Think about that. Think about that. Somebody needs you. You might not even know who they are yet, but somebody needs you. All right, let's get going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. There it is. I'm going to have all of Coach K's information down in the show notes so you can uh, get connected with her and so you can get some of this exclusive ugly brand apparel. Got got to get you got to get you one. You got to get you about three of them, actually, because each time you get one, then you're going to you know look at the shoes that you got in the closet. You're going to look at the mm-hmm. sweats that you got. You got to match it up. You know what I'm saying? You got to match it up. So yeah. everybody, once again, I want to just encourage you all uh, make sure to con- connect with Kelly. And then also, I want you to know that this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where we help you establish your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Until next time, peace and God bless.